Hey everybody, I hope you are having a great week. We are live, which is very cool. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, let's see. Let's see who's out there. We have Willie. How you doing, my friend? And we have Mr. Roy. Good to see you. Hi, Colette. And okay, cool. Very cool. So, uh, how's the sound and the picture? Picture looks pretty good, but the sound is kind of up in the air. You guys let me know how that sounds. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to blow it up. And then I'm going to go back. Let's see how this works. And maybe go back here like that. That's pretty darn clear, right? So that looks pretty good. So here we are. So part one. And so thank you, Willie. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up there? Hey, Billy Abel. Nice to see you. So glad you can make it. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't advertise much today on this particular, you know, sometimes I don't even want a crowd, you know, sometimes I just want to hang out with the regulars. <laughs> you know, it's, that's how I feel today. Just kind of want to hang out with my regular peeps. But, you know, more the merrier, you know, I hope, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, you can learn from, all that good stuff. And so the model for these next uh, live streams is Billie Eilish. She is a pop singer. Uh, oh, hey, how you doing? Is that Jewel or is that Orit? Essentino Ess artist, good to see you. So glad you can make it. Thank you so much. So yeah, so this is uh, part one, which is good because part one usually has, you know, a lot of the really good techniques in there, which is, you know, really fun and enjoyable. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Maybe we can lighten it up a little bit. There we go. I can lighten up a little bit. That's my problem. Hey, Jewel and Ari, how cool. Two, two great people here. So glad to see you. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the thing I want to check out is I want to make sure that this is the same size because I'm going to use this to actually use as a mask. So I'm looking at one and three quarter inches. Let's see. One and three quarter inches. So I think it's the same size. I'm going to go here. Looks like one and a half, and looks like one and a half. Yeah, I think it is the same size. So what I'm going to do is use this. I'm going to cut this out, use this as a mask, go in with my white mixture, and then we'll start. So the first one, the first episodes are usually, you know, they go quick. They start out slow, then it goes really fast. So. So this is my plan. So I'll zoom out a little bit. So, oh wow, that's really zoomed out. <laughs> so here's my plan. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and cut this out over here. And this way um, I'll use it as a mask to spray my white. Okay, so, so I have to find my razor blade. Today's one of those days where I cannot find a thing. Hey, what's up, Mr. Leahy? Good to see you. And we have the nameless subscriber. How are you guys doing? Mr. Leahy, all the way from back from Kissimmee, Florida, which I lived for nine years. Uh, I do miss Kissimmee a lot. You know, I'm not a big Disney fan. However, I do miss... Kissimmee and all the, you know, all the really cool people that live there and all that. Oh boy. So having trouble locating my razor blade. I'll 
A lot of times when I can't find anything, because there's two reasons. Either A, I put it away, or B, it's right in front of me and I can't see it, or C, it rolled off. And that's scary, because if it rolled off, you don't want to step on it, right? Oh my God. He has something with a razor blade. You definitely don't want that hanging about. <laughs> it'll, it'll end up turning up in the bed, you know? So really quite scary. All right, so still no razor blade. Found it, it was right in front of me. Okay, guys, I'm ridiculous. Oh, yes, Old Town was great, wasn't it? I used to get the, they used to have in Old Town in Kissimmee, they had uh, the old Coca Cola bottles, like from the 50s, which was really great at the store there. And. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to cut this. Now, someone told me when I'm using an, a razor blade, is that you don't look where the point of the razor blade is. You actually look uh, in front of the razor blade, you know, as to where you're cutting. And the mind and the eye and the body kind of follow it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And believe it or not, it works for me. And we're just going to move this here. So in this pose, it's not like I'm protecting anything except for a couple of the contours. And I still want the white going everywhere because when it does, it tends to uh, leave like a not a blue shift when I go over it with the the ink, but it does kind of, you know, just change the value just a little bit. So I want to avoid that. So I did cut out Billy's face here. There we go. And we will, we won't need to do anything here in the neck area. Not yet, but we may. That's the question, we may. So let me move my cutting board aside. Can't believe I couldn't find my razor blade, which was six inches away from me. Actually, I can believe that. So Wendy, and we have Wendy here, and Todd, great to see you guys. How's it going? Todd, how you feeling with your second shot? Todd had his second shot of Moderna today. So tell me, how did it go? Uh, did it feel better or worse than the first shot? And thanks for sharing that with me. I'm going for my second shot on the 26th. So that's going to be interesting. There we go. And so you see how I cover that up. And now we'll just put on our magnets. And I'm going to load my Omni. They are in Chandler Omni. Or is it? I don't know if it's they are in Chandler. I think it's they are in Chandler. So far, so good. So cool, so cool. Brad, guys, how's it going, sir? Good to see you. If I didn't say hello. Uh, little discombobulated today. I don't know why. I shouldn't be, right? Okay. Now, let me get the other airbrush sort of fired up here. See right here, this is the Omni 4000. And let's go ahead with the white mixture. The white mixture is uh, Drew Blair's 50-50 uh, Illustration White by Createx. 
And the reason why I use this is because if you thin it out and then lower your air pressure, you're able to have a transparent coverage, which is really fantastic. So it's important to turn on my compressor. Just minor technicality. Okay, there we go. And Lower that air pressure a little bit. Okay, so, oh, thank you so much. So, Asatino Jewel and Ori, they went ahead and gave me a uh, super sticker of $6.99. I appreciate that so much. I'm going to use that to get a coffee tomorrow. So, actually, I'm probably going to buy some kale because I have coffee. So, that's for kale. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that, ladies, so much. John Deepman, how's it going? Patty C. Good to see you guys. Wow, so far we have 12 concurrent viewers. That's not bad. I appreciate that so much. So Orit and Jewel, what they do is really fantastic. I know there's several of you all who are into uh, YouTube and trying to grow your channels. And... It's their name, Esatino Artists. If you look them up on YouTube, you will see what they do. And they have an amazing, amazing live stream every Thursday night at 6, uh, every Thursday night, 6 o'clock Pacific Time and 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And it's just great talking about all different kinds of, of ways to increase uh, revenue, increase uh Search engine optimization. They are geniuses, those two. So check them out. Esatino Artists on YouTube. So let's see. Okay, so here we go. I think I'm going to zoom in. Let's Before I do that, let me see if I can bring up Billy's picture. Got to add source. Let's see. Got to bring up Billy. Where are you, Billy? There you are. Okay, so this is the reference I'm working from. So as you can see, and what I'm going to do is, um, let's zoom in. Okay. We'll zoom in. We'll put her down here. Move this over. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so now what I wanna do, as you see with the reference, I wanna basically not do the highlights, but the lights. So the lightest areas, not the highlights, just to bring them forward and have the paper be the mid-tone, which is very important. Yes, tomorrow's live stream. I look forward to it every single week. I tell you, it's always a lot of fun. And it's great to uh, talk with everybody. Great community there. So that's 9 p.m. on Thursdays. And that's Eastern Time. So I'm a good distance. I would say I'm about five inches away. And you have to really be careful here. Oh, great. Steven just subbed. How fantastic. So cool. Sora Sid, how you been? Good to see you. So, Sora Sid, have I tried color? Many, many, many years I've been working in color. I've uh, been, uh, you know, it's just, it's just here. It's um, just working in black and white. But I've been working in color, I would say, since... Definitely since the late 80s. The mid 80s I've been working in color. But for here, for our live streams and for this YouTube channel, it's strictly black and white. Because what I feel that it's so important to... Um, what I feel is that it is so crucial to get the drawing down. And when you work in black and white, it's more drawing than painting. But when you think of drawing, you think of just lines, right? But no, drawing is definitely much deeper than that. 
Drawing contains everything but the tint. You know, you have your values, you have your edges, you have your lights in the darks and the darks in the lights. There's so much proportions. So that's pretty much my reasoning sort of set. But I do urge everyone to make sure that we have our drawing 100% down before we venture into color. It's so important, sort of said, you know? Oh, look, so that's great. Hillbilly uh, went ahead and uh, subbed, so that's fantastic. Everybody, if you can, go ahead and sub as a Tino artist. They're so fantastic. And uh, Jewelry, what is the name of the YouTube, on uh, the Facebook uh, group? Because the Facebook group's fantastic, too. Really is. I haven't steered you guys wrong yet. You guys are going to be very happy uh, that you joined that group. I am. Oh, fantastic. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Good to see you. Oh, so the Nameless did one of uh, Billie Eilish that she had a crown of spiders crawling. Oh boy, that was something, that was a scary one. Yes, value, color, then, actually drawing is all part of it, Sora said, it's, uh, drawing is everything in black and white, you know? So that's drawing, in my opinion, and the way I was trained. Color is a little bit different, but what Angra said, Jean Augusta Dominique Angra, 19th century French uh, neoclassical painter, he said that a good painting is 85% drawing. And it does make sense, doesn't it? So it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but watch when I lift this paper. Man, it's going to look like, holy cow, a lot has been done. And be like, wow, Timmy went crazy with the white. It doesn't look like it, but it sure will be. So what we can do now is we can lift up this here. Let's see how let's see how good or bad it went, right? Okay, as you can see, uh, quite white. So definitely, definitely did the job. Now, it didn't do everything perfect. because Well, there is a shadow over here, but not over here. So it kind of, kind of missed a little bit. So we're just going to connect it here. See, it's, nothing is beyond fixing, right? That's for sure. Uh, Wendy says, tell me where you got the magnets and the metal thing you are typing on. Well, the metal thing you can get, Wendy, on uh, Amazon. I think it's like $18, and that's easy enough. Now, the magnets, somebody gave them to me as a gift, so I don't know where they got them. But, um, yeah, they're easy to get. What are they, nickel, cadmium, or something like that? Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, see right here, we kind of missed this area right here. We'll just fix that. Oh, I don't know, Wendy. I don't know what the name of it is. I wish I did. Um, I'll see if I can get you the link later this evening afterwards. Okay, so now we'll zoom out and we'll see what we got. Boy, that's far away. There we go. Let's lighten it up a bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let's see. 
Oh, Patty got hers at the container store. Look at that. Oh, rare earth magnets. That's what they are. And and Mr. Uh, Roy from Color Graphics 49 says Amazon and Hobby Lobby. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we're going to basically go into this mostly in freehand today. Just, just a little whim here and there. Let me get my special top secret airbrush glove. Okay, so we'll zoom in. Let's start in her eyes as we usually do start, right? Let's come over here. Come down over. Okay, great. So I want you all to see see her so we'll put her over here and let's go to town okay so now we're going to work on her eye here so i have pure ref so i blow up my reference to the size that i'm working on on the screen and it's really quite convenient one second rule always watch for one second before you paint for one second and that's not a rule of time interview interval, but it is a rule as in, as a as the ratio. So you always want to look for a second before you paint for a second, or two seconds, or three seconds, whatever, whatever. So it's a one to one ratio, if that helps. And remember, whatever we do with one eye, we have to do with the other. But we're just going to come in over here. And remember, when you want to go lighter, of course, you're going to go further away from, from the surface. And since we're over here, let's go ahead and we'll just start with her eyelid here. And I'm working in a light mixture, which is part of my Airbrush India inks. Tim's Airbrush India inks, which are available at paintedglyphs.com. You get like a six month supply if you work every day for like $16.95, best value out there. Without question, uh, no. I don't. I don't think refrigerator magnets. That's for sure. I'm gonna work on the crease here. There we go. So sometimes, you know, speed is just as important for accuracy, right? You don't want to go too slow. So let's go ahead over to the other eye here. Oh, look at that. So uh, Colette has the information already. And the Naval subscriber says he keeps trying to subscribe to some of my channels, but, but when I click on the name, all the options I get. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Willie says that uh, she looks like she's on something. That's, I hope not, right? I hope she isn't. That would be bad. I would hate to think that she was on something. I love that. 
air pressure just a little bit. And increase my distance. So on this light blue paper, I find that the black or the India ink is a little more temperamental. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna use it, just means that I have to tread a little lighter. So with that one second roll, it keeps me honest. If I want to get a hard edge, I'm going to go real close. See that? I'm very close when I want a hard edge. So I'm moving down to her nose here. No, I don't feel refrigerator magnets will cut it. That's for sure. I want like a like a real gray, a light gray. I'm gonna really increase my distance. The further you're away, the lighter the value your spray is going to be. So I want you definitely to know that. I may change the lens in this camera because right now I do have a wide angle lens, but I don't think it's serving well because what's happening is I feel that I feel what's happening while we do that, it's it's uh, not giving you a, a really good view. You know what I mean? And so, so I think I'm gonna change it. Let's zoom out. Okay, I'm going to make sure I got my magnets on, have my magnets on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to change out the actual, uh, hey Sam, how's it going? How's everything? Good to see you. So I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, lens to a 24 millimeter. It's better because it has a much, it has a much uh, faster lens. So what I'm going to do is turn this off. Well, first I'm going to bring up a different, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one off. And we're just going to change out the lens. Let me put this one on. But I'm going to have to change the tripod because the it's going to be all crazy as far as the angle. So let's go ahead and put this one back. That's the good thing about doing live streams with DSLR lenses because you can, you definitely can, can do more. So as you can see, now we're all over the place. So let's see if we can, we'll see how the aperture, oh, that's much better, much better already, yes. There we go. I like that. You guys like that better? Was that a success? I hope. Oh, thanks, Steve. That's the Neo Diminium. Wow. 
that's pretty cool. So a lot of different magnets uh, out there, huh? Okay. So, so is this better? Uh, this, you like this better, guys? Okay. And let's change this so you're not looking at me. Maybe you can look at my hand. I'll put this over here. Maybe that would serve you all better. Okay. All right, so let's continue to continue to rock, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, so let's darken this just a bit more. There we go. All right. Back to the show. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this mid-tone right over here. Kind of this dark light. And take your time. Remember, the one second rule is so important. There's no points for speed, you know? That's for sure. Don't make one move with the airbrush until you looked. Or we will be sorry. Now is a good time to start erasing, but I would erase with something soft like this mono eraser. It's probably your best bet, not too harsh. So now is a good a time as any. And we're just going to continue. Now I want this to be very light, so I'm going to be probably about four inches away.
though we are, you know, doing large areas, we still want to make sure we see the ins and outs, that we don't just, you know, do one value. If we see it, you know, sort of add to lighter values and then to darker values, you definitely want to make note of that when you're working. Okay, so you see I'm just moving very very quickly quickly, but Deliberately so I'm moving fast, but I'm observing observing very 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 much So with this light gray working with light gray as and also Working with the light gray on the after I go in with the white mixture, it's sort of like normally painting on the pebble gray on steroids. You got to be careful. Every every decision is accentuated, so you have to be a little more deliberate. Those of you who worked with this uh, paper before. So, uh, Sam asks, has anyone ever cleaned acrylic with isopropyl? When I was a kid, yes. You know, when I started painting in high school. And that just ate it up. The alcohol just got rid of it. Just really. It's like paint. It's like turpentine to oils. So Steve uses IPA, so that's pretty cool. So one of the things I always tell my students is never try and get a likeness in the first 75% of your painting. Your, your concern is not having it look like her in the first three in the first three quarters of your painting. Having it look like her is not even in your vocabulary. Okay, so you see how we're moving down the center line of, of her face? That's what we want to be doing. Very quickly.
moving right down the center line of her face. And when you see lost and found edges, where those edges are lost, don't try and find them. And where you do have edges, don't try and lose them. Okay, so... Let's see if we can do some erasing here and there, right? You want to erase as you go. It's very important. And I'm going to take a seltzer break. This seltzer break is brought to you by Vintage Seltzer, who are not sponsors in any way of this channel. Super Killer, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. So, Superkiller says, if I'm going to do a color portrait, no erasing, what color underpainting would you use? Well, always erase when I do, but I always like working in black and white. And the reason being is because it sets up a really nice underpainting. It's a grisaille, which is, I think, French for gray. And so, I really prefer because I get to use my India inks, you know. And for under, under, under paintings, my India inks are bar none the best. And for many, many, many reasons, they're the best. And uh, I'll go over them uh, in just one moment. So why am I India ink under paintings? Those of you who underpaint using acrylic, you guys know how acrylic paint, when you have acrylic on top of pencil that pencil is part of your painting forever but with my india inks it actually comes to the surface and you're able to erase with ease and with any underpainting you always 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 need to erase you know it's so important so very important so right under here it's just a little bit Okay, I want to I want to create this edge here. So that's what I'm doing right now, creating a nice edge. Nice, beautiful edge. There's a little cast shadow happening right there. Create that. And let's lift it up. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We can always erase. Not bad. Look at that beautiful edge. You see how her chin comes forward and neck goes back? Bada bing, bada boom. No problem. That's exactly how we get things done. So Super Killer says, but does the gray change the tone? If so, do you need brown or red? Well, that's the great thing because the India inks are under, uh, they're waterproof. And when I'm doing an underpainting, I'm usually two f-stops lighter, two, two to three values lighter than I normally would be uh, because when you add color to it, it actually darkens it. So that's when you do your underpainting super, you uh, make sure that you make it on the light side, you know? So yeah, in underpainting, color should not be your concern. The underpainting, what the true 
thing of why underpaintings were done and is because we wanted to have a sort of steel girder of a building you know you want to have structure you want to set up where the lights and darks are going to be so you can put color on top and that's crucial so yeah I want you to try that I think you're gonna like it very much you know and thanks Willie I think you're talking about my painting I appreciate that sir as always And let's continue moving on. Oh, yeah, we were going to erase. That's what we were going to do. Let's see if we could use our pink pearl. I like the pink pearl because it's nice and soft. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't pull up too much, which is great. You know, you don't want to pull up too much. And just lifts up the pencil lines, which is great. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, and the first the first step sort of block in real quick, don't they? You know. And of course we, so you know, with our erasing. I like to use very non-aggressive erasers for two reasons. One, uh, you know, you don't want to pull up the work that we did. You know, you don't want to, because the ink is very erasable. So you don't want to pull that up, right? And number two is uh, you don't want to tear into that paper. So in the beginning, I try and use the softer, softer erasers. Here. There we go. So she has a very distinct look, and so that's that's what we really are thinking in the back of my mind. But remember what I said, you know, her likeness is not my concern. If it happens early, yay. If it doesn't, okay. So it's all good. I'm getting rid of some of those pencil lines. Let's see here. Okay, so let's continue. So we already worked up here. So I know my tendency is like, ah, uh, go in there and start working in detail, getting that done. However, you know, that's going against the program. So let's go with the program and we'll just continue, you know, working down, trying to get the whole of, of the painting done. In a sense, getting as much done, as much covered as possible. here so just the large shapes you know we have our necklace here I'm just gonna freehand it
this is very oddly going very quick. Not sure why, but I'm just going with it, right? Sometimes you're not sure, you know, you just got to go with the flow, right? And this is one of those times where things just seem to be going really quickly. But you still have to do that one second rule. There are no points for speed. It doesn't matter how fast you go. What matters is what you end up at the end. Okay, where is my free hand shield? So perpendicular and not parallel, unless otherwise specified, which is a rarity where that is not the case. What I will do is I think I'm thinking I'm going to cover this hole up and then we're going to work in, I might do that off camera, put the black of the background. Oh, well, thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. Thanks, Sam. Thank you so much. Oh, Brad, thank you so much. So a lot of nice compliments. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the encouragement, everybody. So I just want to establish everything, right? That's really important at this point, is establishing everything. So this airbrush right here, which I use, and I have been using since September of 2018, is this amazing airbrush. It's the Customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. As you can see, I'm working the whole painting tonight with this airbrush. And I'd like to see anyone with a custom micron to come close to it and you know I think I think a custom micron can come close to it uh, let me rephrase that but then again a custom micron is like four or five hundred dollars and my airbrush is 149 so what I did was I took a great design and made it better by changing the needle uh, you know changing the trigger changing the back uh, putting a spring over here, uh, getting this dialed in, everything, the, the needle spring, everything is dialed in when you purchase it, which is really fantastic. And like I said, this is something that I'm able to do any kind of uh, detail. As you can see, this painting, she's about maybe five inches her head. And I had no problem with that detail at all. And a lot of it is the airbrush. To be able to do larger areas like this. And then come in and do these really tight, tight areas. One second rule always. I have to tell myself that. So just like you guys, I get, I get a little lackadaisical. And so I always remind myself. That, that is so key. So I'm using a freehand shield to cover up. And like I said, sometimes, you know, you might get a likeness early. God bless. That's fantastic. However, you know, you want to make sure that you don't, you don't get too happy. 
because the likeness will come and go in the middle of the painting. And, you know, you could be like, ah, I had the likeness. It was there, honest. And then you're just trying getting it back, and that's not good, and you're just not having a good time at all. So you're just going to look at the larger, the larger shapes as much as you can, as well as the smaller shapes. Go back over here to the eye. Thank you, Paulette. I appreciate that. Uh, have a great night, Patty. Don't work too hard tomorrow. You take care. <laughs> yeah, Wendy said, <laughs> looks like I'll be finished tonight. Some days, right? It just appears that way. still in a light mixture so things are looking dark but trust me they are quite light I always say one of these days I'm going to be doing these live streams of these celebrities and boom they're going to show up and they're going to be like Tim I love that and I want you to do a mural in my mansion it's going to happen. Watch. I'm declaring it. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. So, Brandon, how you doing, Brandon? Good to see you. How well does that brush spray Createx paints? Uh, yes, very well. Now, what I recommend is what you learn when you just work in India ink and black and white is you learn what viscosity or thick or thinness it takes to actually uh, have paint go through the airbrush so this is a 0 0.30 and uh, so yeah definitely no problem but you know this is a very uh, you know dialed in and uh, tuned up airbrush so just keep it clean that's the only thing I would say Brandon it's not something that you can get dirty and you know come back and clean it because it is a tuned up airbrush and, uh, you know, so definitely keep it clean. That's the only thing I would say. But it definitely is better than the eclipses. It blows every eclipse out of the water. It blows out the uh, high line, the Iwata high line. It's much better. So that I can give you first-hand information. So all those airbrushes are more expensive than mine. And the parts, the parts are much more expensive. So that's also, you know, the parts of the Iwatas are much more expensive than getting parts for the custom Micron. I'm sorry, for the Extreme Patriot Arrow. 
Pastor Mike, on my God, you got to mortgage that house. Oh, so, yes. Okay, so Brandon, you like the Badger 105 and the Sotar? So the Badger 105 and the Sotar, think of them as like, you know, maybe like a Mustang, right? And think of this as like, I would say like a Corvette, you know? Definitely, this is definitely a Corvette. That's a Mustang. So this will, you'll definitely be really happy with the kind of detail that you would get here and consistently. Uh, Oh, I think the Eclipse is a very good airbrush for me, but, you know, once I found my Extreme Patriot Arrow, it was a done deal. I went ahead and sold my Eclipses. I sold my, uh, sold my Custom Micron, and I think that's, considering I paint about six hours a day, I would say, yeah, I think that's a really good testimony. Yes, exactly. Uh, Samuel says uh, he likes his eclipse, but not for portraits. Correct, because you need that tight detail. Hillbilly says his Micron is much more finicky than his Extreme Patriot. It's true, you know, the Microns are wonderful. I'm not saying they're not great airbrushes, as you know, uh, Mr. Hillbilly, but I really feel that, you know, to have it work every time, you know, I mean, you're going to have bad days with any airbrush, but, you know, it definitely is not finicky as, uh, you know, as much as the Micron, as uh, Hillbilly has said, definitely, I agree there. So what's interesting now is we're doing all the darks, and now we're going to go ahead and start some of the um, mid-tones a little bit up here, because... Yes, we have a lot of detail to do here, and that's my, that's my inclination, right? Go and get that detail, you know, full steam ahead. But I really have to calm down and look at the whole picture, and that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the whole picture, and that's what I want to get. I want to, I want to get a feeling of her, and then go from there. So does anyone miss the comments that I used to put up on the screen? Or are you all digging the, uh, you know, having the reference and, you know, the image I'm painting bigger? I hear the Rich Pen is a nice brush, yes. But I have it beaten price, that's for sure. Uh... Yes, the Extreme Patriot Arrow, you do have a learning curve with it, but just like anything else, you know, if you have a new car, you have to learn how the brakes are and everything like that, and it's definitely a, but you won't go back. Once you get a handle of this, this Bronco here, uh, it's, it's really, you're not going to go back, trust me. Oh, you never found a nozzle, huh? Oh, man. Did you try, like, with magnets and stuff like that? That helps with me. I'm, like, 10 inches away getting this really light value over here. Wow, it's ten. It's ten thirty. So should the uh, right Willie right right about now the uh, comments sort of went away.
when you're working, you want to make sure you don't get too wet because you can stain the paper, right? So you got to be careful. That was a long time ago. <laughs> the good old days, right, Willie? So I'm going to get some paper and I'm going to save my board. There we go. Just save it. Don't want to kill it. I don't like messes, messes, you know? Definitely don't like messes. Hey, Nikos, how you doing? Good to see you. How's school? So great that you're here. So we got a lot of great people here today. So thanks everybody for coming and joining me. I appreciate that more than you guys know. Interesting. So sometimes when you're working, you will see that for some reason you missed a drawing. So, so good to see you. How's your comedy going? Let's bring this all the way down. Sometimes we'll miss the drawing, but thank God for erasers, right? Let me just come up like this. Bring this up and get the shape of her nostril. Brandon says, mostly painting fishing lures, but have been playing with India ink for fun. It's definitely helpful. So great. And uh, Nico says, Timothy, you should do a Kurt Cobain. Oh, wow. That would be cool. Kurt Cobain is really fantastic. Uh, you'll buy it for 300 <laughs> I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. That's something I definitely have to do in the near future. So you're a big fan of Nirvana? They were great. I listen to them almost every day. Yes, he was. And you know, he went to art school, you know? That's true. So Nameless Subscriber says uh, he has uh, the needle guard after setting it down, ripped apart the garage looking for the needle guard. Turned up? Never turned up. Oh, wow. That'll turn up one day when you're moving or something. That's usually what happens. Or the cat will be playing with it, you know? said he didn't know that okay cool was that about uh was about Kurt Cobain went to art school yeah it was very interesting you know very interesting guy and uh let's see oh so Nico's likes grunge death metal and a lot of great people like metal and death metal that's cool Mr. David Trevino how are you my friend good to see you How's it going? Nameless subscriber bent his needle. Oh no. And uh, yeah, what brush, uh, brush is that, nameless subscriber? Look long, paint short. I guess that's another Timism. Look long, paint short. 
you look long and paint short, your mind's always going to be in the game. As you see, as I'm painting, I'm starting to clean up some edges in here and there. Oh, Master Airbrushes. Oh, boy. Uh... Sam says, is that the new master for 149? Oh, I don't know sure about that. And uh, I hear there's one, a new one, definitely. Uh, Willie says, yes, that's in the book already. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Continuing moving around. So... Whenever we're painting, remember, we're always asking that question, what am I leaving out? What am I ignoring, right? So, you just, and while you're doing that, you want to make sure you get some of these shapes correct, because we're painting shapes and values and edges. So first we do the lines, then we do the shapes, and then we do the edges, then we do the, the lights and the darks, the darks and the lights, and then we do the highlights, the dark accents. So it's a very pragmatic approach to painting, but in a sense that it's not formulaic, you know, pragmatic is as to what you're looking for, what your aims are. So let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, you fixed it. Very cool. And Nico says, Nirvana Soundgarden is great. Black Sabbath, Alice in Chains, Def Leppard is great. Uh, Rat, Foo Fighters is fun. Uh, Linkin Park, I like some of this stuff. Judas Please, Priest, uh, Pearl Jam, you forgot those guys. Love Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam's amazing. Uh, and name subscriber is working on upgrading his compressor, then upgrading your brushes. Cool. Very cool. So let's move on over here and see what we're doing here. I do like Iron Maiden, yes, very cool, very cool, Willie. Really. And of course, Van Halen. So I'm pumping the trigger back and forth, as you can see. Billy is going pretty fast. What's going on, Billy? You're, I'm painting you very quickly here. I don't know what's happening, but we'll go with the flow. Motley Crew, very cool. Ooh, uh, as far as compressors, yeah, Harbor Freight's okay, but please stay away from Harbor Freight airbrushes. That's only for your own good. It's hard enough with this airbrush thing to have inferior airbrushes, you know? But I know you're not going to get an Harbor Freight airbrush. 
I have faith in you. I'm a good four or five inches away when I'm getting these like really uh, dark, dark lights here. And this is where a lot of the three dimensional qualities happen, you know. Mr. Johnson, how are you, sir? So good. I didn't. So Steve Johnson did this amazing eagle that he posted not too long ago. It's just kick ass. I'm not sure if it's an eagle or a hawk. But holy cow, is that amazing. Uh, just great. Rat, um, I don't know about, you know, I, I think they're good, but I don't know if they, I'm a big fan of them, Nikos, that's for sure. But they're good. Uh, Steve says he found it was consistently with the knockoff brushes, you could get a good one, then one that was junk. They sometimes suck to get parts, support as well. I can see that. Uh, Willie says, I know you're not into a rush, Tim, but it looks like you will be finishing this one tonight. <laughs> it's, it's funny, right? You know, how sometimes, you know, paintings take on a life of their own. I mean... Almost like a relationship, you know, it's like, like everything's like different with each person. Just different, different, right? It's so funny. Really is. Yeah, you know, when you get like more advanced and you're doing this stuff for money, you really want your airbrush to just work, right? You want it to do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. And if you're, you know, trying to save a buck here, you know, without quality, then, you know, you're bound to be disappointed and it's going to hurt your workflow. So... That's the one thing. It depends, you know, if you're, you know, starting out, you just want to get your feet wet, it's all good, definitely. But, you know, the more it's like, okay, this is how I'm going to eat, you definitely need an airbrush that's going to do what you want when you want it to do it. Gonna zoom in on her mouth here. Oh, your profile picture, very cool. And remember, never go for the likeness in the beginning. Only go for the shapes. Remember, you're painting the light, not the likeness. Okay? I want you to always concentrate that on the first 75% of your painting. 
Otherwise, you'll be chasing something you don't need to. Remember, you know, in the early going, the ink is not always, uh, you know, as smooth. So you're just going to have to, you know, adjust here and there every now and then. Because a lot of times the, uh, the pencil is interacting a little bit, but it's just easily erased, you know. Oh, okay. Country is great. Good country is fantastic. Ah, so Steve, so who's who's having it? Who's leaving? Let's see. Oh, well, Mr. Uh, Willie, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you have a great night, my friend. Don't work too hard tomorrow, okay? And I hope to see you next week, definitely. Here it's just, I think it's a pencil line. Okay, we'll just calm that down a little bit. Wendy says she looks 3D. Thank you. I appreciate that, Wendy. So I'm going to take a uh, very quick uh, seltzer break. So we're moving at a pretty good clip. We're almost at a pretty good clip. We're almost at 11 o'clock. How about that? Off camera, I'm going to go ahead and mask her off and then paint in the background. And you'll just see how amazing uh, how light everything becomes. Everything looks dark right now, you know. Some temple pilots, definitely. Uh, favorite song from the 90s, I would have to say Pearl Jam Black. What do you guys think? Now, iconic early 90s you would probably have to say nirvana smells like teen spirit right something like that a7x are we talking cameras the a7x isn't that a sony camera jeremy's good yes black hole sun very true Good, good music out there. For, for a young guy, you have a great taste in music. There he goes. So 
now it's it's uh, on to the um, on to the dark lights down here. So Sam says, Sam, should you shake your inks if they're they've been sitting? Yeah, definitely. It's always a good idea to give them a quick shake, right? When you do shake them, make sure they're far away from your your painting. You know, only from my own experience, it was really bad. Uh, oh, Avenge Sevenfold A Seven X. Okay, because A Seven X is actually, I believe the A Seven X is a is a Sony, if I'm not mistaken. Camera as well. Gonna be about five inches away, six inches away if it's too dark, seven inches away, and I'm just putting in these values here. Very subtle. Subtle is everything. Subtlety is everything when it comes to painting a, a female portrait. I find the male portraits a little bit different. Okay, let's see what I've been missing here. Super Kill says, music does nothing for his workflow. He has something he wants to pay attention to, a podcast. A lot of people are like that, definitely. I could see that. And DKM, cool. And Dark Metal, wow, listen to that, that's cool.
Oh, so Steve Johnson, you're starting a new piece tomorrow. Oh, great. What is that, sir? And uh, an English scriber said, you used to listen to Cradle of Fifth, Behemoth, but that was just a phase. Okay, so get out the eraser, get rid of some pencil lines. Think of the pencil lines as training wheels, right? You don't want to take the training wheels off too soon, so make sure that you take them off when you don't need them anymore. Otherwise, it's going to be counterproductive if you get rid of them before you use those pencil lines, those little guidelines. going to adjust her nostril here and I always find it best to adjust with oh so you're using the inks oh I can't wait that's fantastic mr. mr. Johnson oh dog perfect dog painting I love your dog portraits they're great See how I can shape that best with, with the pencil? I can bring this septum down a little further. Something about her. She's very cute, you know, uh, very cerebral. You know, I do, I do love, you know, her music. It's definitely different. And so that's some of the reasons why I chose to paint Billy Eilish. And she was totally independent, you know, no record label or anything in the beginning, you know, she did her own thing. I think her brother produced her stuff. It's just amazing what young people can do today. So who is Dan on Spotify? That's interesting. Again, so I'm looking at some of the contours here and especially in here. So there are some, some little details I can actually fix as I go, as you can see. And we'll get rid of those pencil lines as we go. I really feel when I do a portrait, I almost get to know the person. So those of you who do portraits out there, do you feel that? You, there's, you, you get to know that person in a way you normally don't because we, even people we see every day, we don't get to like stare at them for hours at a time. But, you know, when we paint a portrait, we really gaze into their eyes and probably like no one else has ever done in life.
So yeah, I really feel when I paint somebody's portrait, be it a celebrity, a model, or someone I know, I really feel that I have, you know, a sense of who they are on a much deeper level. Oh, Nameless Subscriber says he thinks this uh, painting is going to be done in record time. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I said, you know, every painting, just like every person that you meet, you know, is different, you know, and some speak to you really fast and some is like, you know, like a root canal. You're just fighting you every step of the way and some paintings just sort of flow as if it's being painted by itself. I'm sure you heard that phrase before. That it just felt like the painting was painting itself. And that's kind of how I'm feeling right now with this painting. At this time. The preliminary drawing actually I had so much trouble with, believe it or not. I had a lot of trouble with it. Like seeing dead people. I can, yes, I could see that, definitely. You know, when you paint somebody who's gone and you look at them, you, you really get a sense of who they were. I can't speak for other artists, but I know as for me, definitely. Yeah, so Nameless Subscriber says, are you going to add dark background? Yes, but I'll I'll do that offline. I'll definitely save his all for that. Uh, there will be like mist everywhere, you know. I'll, I'll have to like have the cats at the neighbor's house. Just kidding. But yeah, it will be a mess. So I don't want to have you guys go through that. So I'm going to do that off camera. Everything looks dark right now, but it really isn't. It's just that everything around it is so light, and that's what's making everything look dark. So uh, Mr. Steve says uh, he knows every dog that he's painted or drawn. Yes, absolutely every time. Uh, but that's art is emotional. You have to use that emotion. Yes, definitely when you're painting portraits. You have to say something about that. Even like an impression. Because you might not know that person or that dog. But that impression is what's going to give you that emotion that you need. That, that sort of visceral response that you know, we want our viewer to have when they see the artwork. So 
I'm kind of uh, weary of starting to go too much on the dark because you will have quite a bit of overspray and that will kind of ruin ruin things that you work so hard to get, you know? Oh, I don't, I have a cat, but no dogs, my friend. So, Mr. Steve Johnson, do you have dogs? Getting rid of some of these pencil lines. See, you get, so now we can start getting rid of the training wheels, right? And, you know, if, if it doesn't work with the, uh, you know, a least aggressive eraser, keep going more and more aggressive until you get what you need. See how nice and white that her eye there is? But that's way too white. White of the eyes are really white. See the detail I'm able to get here on the uh, line between the two lips. This is time for my glasses. Dun dun dun. So twenty congruent uh, concurrent views in the uh, last fifteen minutes. Thank you, everybody. So go ahead if you are here. Go ahead and hit that like button for me. Uh, you know, it makes me feel good that you guys and girls liked it. So go ahead hit that like button if you haven't already. Am I out of ink again? Nope, still got some. Still have some, I should say. So you can see how, you know, how much detail I actually can get with this airbrush. I'll tell you, I only push it because I know that when you do have it, you're going to be super happy if you're painting portraits like mine, you know, where you want to get that tight detail when you need it and you don't have $600 to buy an airbrush, right? Uh, I would say spend 150 on my airbrush and get yourself some really great accessories. Maybe a great desk, right? Or a great easel, something like that would be fantastic. Uh, much better than putting all your money into an airbrush. That if it goes if it goes down, you're gonna have to like spend money that you need for other supplies. It's just gonna go bye bye, you know, fixing an airbrush. So. You know, if you have to fix the nozzle, it costs you like $9 uh, for my Extreme Patriot Arrow, which is fantastic. So, definitely. Definitely, I only push it because I believe it. I believe in it. And, you know, every airbrush I sell, I hand test. I actually work on one of my paintings for like a, at least a half hour to 45 minutes. Checking everything, the valve, checking the needle, checking the springs. So, you know, that's one thing that no other company does. No airbrush company does when I actually test your airbrush. And, you know, I learned I had in the early days, I had some airbrushes that arrived broken. But now I, I know how to, you know, pack them up in bubble wrap. I ship them internationally. So I think it's the best value out there in airbrushing by far. 
because I'm such a stickler with quality. So it's not leaving my studio unless I can paint my own airbrush. And, uh, you know, this could be my own airbrush. And this is what I would use to do my portrait commissions and my own paintings and everything like that. So it's only when it gets to that level that, you know, I have it totally tuned up that you'll know that you're going to get an airbrush that's not only going to work, but it's going to work perfectly, unless there was some problems in shipping, but that has not happened ever since, uh, you know, I had the first couple that I had some growing pains, but now I just know how to pack them, how much bubble wrap, I have specific boxes I use, I throw in extras, so definitely, paintingcliffs.com, www.paintingcliffs.com, and you will know that your airbrush is going to sing, do everything that you want, when you want it, how you want it, every time. So definitely, 149, and that is on paintedglyphs.com. So go ahead and check it out, and let's see. Oh, and Amos Subscriber says he sees 18 viewers and only 11 likes. That means seven people don't like this. <laughs> well, you know, Nameless Subscriber, they like it, but maybe they just don't like it as much as hitting that like button. Or maybe they're, they're watching it, listening, and doing something else, you know? If they're looking this long, I'm sure they like it, right? You know, that's for sure. If they've been around this long. So last week it was really nice. The average uh, uh, view duration was 23 minutes, you know, which was really cool. Paintedglyphs.com. Yes. www.paintedglyphs.com. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. And go ahead and uh, Go there and uh, and that would be uh, really cool you can see the airbrush you see the inks and all the accessories and I do ship internationally which is really good because a lot of people have a hard time getting good quality airbrushes overseas uh, oh yes only one thumbs up if you hit it a second time that actually takes a thumbs up away you know Oh, Steve likes the, yes, he does. Mr. Johnson loves the, uh, that's funny. Mr. Johnson does love the uh, highlights, you know, with the white pastel. He's a big fan of that stage. I appreciate you. Let's see if I'm focused here. Okay, cool. Let me make sure we're focused. So go here, see how out of focus we are? But if I zoom in, I can see if I am out of focus. See there, we're in good focus. Now when I zoom out, I'm sure we're in focus. So that's cool. The eyeball highlights. Hey, Todd, how's it going? Todd likes his extreme Patriot arrow because I touch. Oh, thank you, my friend. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, Scott says, hey, Scott, how's it going? Oh, great. So two thumbs up. I appreciate that, Scott. So Scott is hillbilly able as well. I'm just going to pull this up here so it looks uh, halfway decent. Holy cow, we're at 1121 already. How about that, huh? This was a... This part, so which, which part do you feel goes by quickly? Part one or the last part? What do you guys think? Love to hear your thoughts.
let's get that uh, face shield again. Part one, yes, that's true. The initial buildup, right? That, you know, is very interesting to a lot of people. Sort of the beginning of, you know, and then all this area right here, right? You get these beautiful edges. So I always spray down away from the freehand shield or the paper shield because if you're going this way, it's going to billow up and you're going to lose that edge. So once again, so even if it's going to billow up, it doesn't matter because you're spraying down. You see that? You're spraying down. So it's not, it's not catching, which is good. And then we'll put this, uh, we'll get our, our regular freehand shield here and Let's just work on some edges now, shall we? Get some beautiful hard edges. I love beautiful hard edges, you know, and they go really good. Uh, have a great time. I'm so glad you're doing well. Thank goodness. And so, you know, I appreciate your bravery getting the second vaccine. And uh, the 26th is my turn, so I'll let you know how it goes, definitely. Brad says, looking good. Look for a PM after the feed. Oh, okay. Look, oh, definitely. Will do, sir. Definitely. Let's pull this over here. So then we could use our aggressive eraser here because right here we have a beautiful light right next to the dark here. I'm just going to pull that out there. Very thin. out some some nice lights here of course nowhere near putting in a highlights but just establishing some of the volume here remember we're looking at the shapes and we want to make things as three-dimensional as possible as early as possible Brad have a great night sir always great to see you sir what eraser this is actually a Venus type E eraser the 605 this one is the 605B. They're the same, but they're a little bit different. Um, I like the 605. You can't buy these anymore. Um, I do sell them on my website, which is cool. Hey, Scott, have a great night. Take care, sir. Oh, so Nico's <laughs> falling asleep typing. <laughs> Yes, it's getting late. I do I do agree. We only have uh, four minutes left to the live stream. Remember, I always try to give you the full two hours because you are all worth it to me and you're worth it, period. I want you all to know that. You guys and girls are worth it. And, you know, sometimes I don't even advertise because I know the right people are going to be here. You know, I know the people who have been with me from the beginning got to be here. So if it's just you guys, that's all good, you know? It's all good in the hood. So remember, your pencil lines in the early going are like training wheels. You want to get rid of them as soon as possible, but not too long, you know? <laughs> Yes, only uh, three minutes left. Hey, Raul, how you doing, man? Good to see you. I did see Rick there. Rick, how are you, sir? I uh, hope you're still with us, uh, with here in the live stream, I should say. 
And Name Scriber says, last time you left your channel on. Yes, so you were one of the people. That's right. I was, I was hopped up on the uh, vaccine. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't say anything that was embarrassing, right? That was funny. Uh, thanks, Sam. I appreciate you, sir. And Raul, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And so we are finishing up today's live stream. Next week, God willing, will be part two of uh, the very talented and lovely Billie Eilish. I think she's amazing. So now I'm getting rid of some of the train wheels, right? That's what we have to do. Get rid of the train wheels, but not prematurely. Nagos, not yet, but pretty soon you'll get the vaccine, my friend. <laughs> hey, Steve, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to see you. Great eagle. And um, so it's, it's so cool to see everybody. We're in the last two minutes. I'm going to put my glasses on. So let's go back so you can see my my happy self here i think this angle is better whoa okay all right so let's work on billy eilish's eye take care hillbilly great to see you uh and thank you todd god bless you and thank you nikos and everybody So, we are at 11.30. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wendy. I appreciate that. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. So, go ahead to paintedglyphs.com. Help out the channel. Buy some ink, some erasers. Buy an airbrush. Keep this channel going. I appreciate you so much. We will hang out next Wednesday at the same time to do part two of Billy Eilish. I had a lot of fun tonight, and I hope you guys did too. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you soon. And I definitely will turn off the live stream this week. <laughs> Let's see.